and it's May and we have uh, Tasa of the Portugal, which is a cup final, like the best team in all of Portugal. And um, I'm a regular starter now. I'm playing and I scored the uh, game winning goal. So it was like uh, amazing in front of like there was like 15,000 people there, which was insane for me. I've never played in front of that many people. Um, so it was like a, the not the ending it's just the beginning but like the ending of a good story hi everyone and welcome back to the sporting world podcast and today i'm here with chandra and chandra first of all thanks for taking the time house house rainy warm lisbon these days oh it's just great you know <laughs> i'm in lisbon so i can't complain too much Absolutely. Well, it's a pleasure having you part of our podcast and we appreciate you taking the time and we're going to dig into a little bit of your background, of course, your story, how you ended up in Lisbon in, in, in the first place too, you know, which is, a, which is an exciting journey in itself. A little bit about, you know, some tips, some advice you have for upcoming upcoming athletes. I know you're quite young nonetheless, though, but you know, you, you've, been, you've been in the game a few years now. So a lot, a lot of cool things there. And like I said, we're happy, happy to have you part of the podcast. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> awesome. So, so let's let, let's kind of like start things right away. Like, talk a little about how I guess your passion and love for for football came came to life for you. Like, how did it all start for you? Um, I started playing soccer at well, I'm gonna say soccer just from back home. We call it soccer football <laughs> at a very young age. Like, I'd say about five years old. Right. Um, and I was kind of just thrown into it because my family all played. My my dad loved, was always my coach. Mm. Uh, my sister played. My brother played. Everyone. Um, and so they just threw me into it as kind of just a fun thing to do. But I didn't think anyone expected me to be as good as I was at a young age. Right. Um, and I just understood the game more than anyone at my age. And I think they just knew like this girl's going to be, she's going to be a soccer player, um, whether she likes it or not. And, <laughs> she likes it or not. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Like I can come up with an example of one time when I was a kid playing against a bunch, I was probably like eight years old playing against other eight year olds. And one of the goalie caught the ball and put the ball down. And I like, was ran over kicked it out of her hands and like scored and she didn't know the rules you're not supposed to know right. the rules at that age yeah. um and the ref was just laughing like what how does this little girl know <laughs> that right, right. Um, <laughs> and yeah like i could start an argument with anyone at that age if they didn't um wrap it properly or something but yeah i think i just really became obsessed with the game and um yeah yeah that's awesome i mean like so you you pretty much knew the offside rule off the bat <laughs> right like no no ref at that age is going to call you offside <laughs> if you're eight years old so i'd be the one being like it's fine and they'd be like how do you know that <laughs> exactly yeah. exactly oh but that's but that's great i mean like it often starts with family right it's kind of like how it all kind of progress and and and, and almost like you, you you're kind of being forced forcing it somehow as well you know kind of like when you're young yeah but, uh, but yeah i mean like it's just great to kind of like hear you know that that kind of like where it all started and and talk a little about you know moving more on the the professional of your football career obviously you know kind of like taking the steps and a little bit about as well how you ended up in sporting lisbon um yeah so when I was younger, I, I played a lot of sports and I kind of had to like narrow it down to which one was my favorite. And that was obviously soccer. Right. Um, and then I played in youth programs um, and we did a lot of showcases in the United States. Sure. Um, so I'm from Toronto, Canada, but we would do all these showcases where like in Florida, where like a hundred scouts would come from colleges and stuff. Yeah. Um, so when I was younger in North America, it's different. You don't think I'm going to go play professionally. You think I'm going to get an education, a scholarship and go play in the United States. That's where right. a lot of talented players go. Yeah. Um, so that was always my goal. And, um, 
it ended up working out for me and I had a few offers and um, I ended up going to Indiana University. Um, it was a great athletic school. Um, it has like all the athletic teams there are great and um, you really feel like a part of a community and stuff. So yeah. it was some of the best four years of my life. And then it wasn't until like my, I'd say my last year of college where I was like, I'm not done playing. Like I, I need to keep going. I'm only like 21. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. still young. I had, yeah, like I, I was like, I'm not done yet. Um, and it was during COVID year when I graduated. Um, and right as around the March time where everything went, wrong with covid i actually had a tryout in for an nwsl team in chicago um and i had like three or four trainings and then they sent us home because of covid right um which was such a bummer um because it was a rare opportunity for like a canadian to play there it's a very american friendly league so right uh, and then that kind of ended but that's where i was like i'm not done i'm gonna go jump at whatever opportunity I can overseas. Yep. And luckily I ended up in Portugal, which is um, like my favorite country over here. <laughs> so, yeah. No, I, you're, and your second favorite is Norway, right? My second favorite is Norway. I have yet to go there yet, but I hear it's amazing. So yeah, when you go, it will be your favorite. <laughs> Who knows? Um, side, side jokes, um, side jokes. Um, anyways, so uh, obviously, you know, as as a Canadian, you, you as you mentioned, you know from Toronto, and and you obviously went through the whole NCAA student athlete process. Um, I wanted to, you know, for those that you know maybe are not so familiar with that, talk a little bit about your experience in the NCAA and a little bit about how it prepared you, uh, you know, for your professional career and essentially, you know, elevated you to to to, to come to Lisbon and, and sporting. Yeah, I think uh, in the NCAA, uh, the Division One there, like it's it's like soccer from a different world. Like the training you go through, um, mentally and physically, um, there's a lot of resources given to you. Um, it was it was really just like a great opportunity for me. Um, and yeah, I would say that it definitely prepared me over the four years, like. On a physical and mental aspect um the league that i was in it's called the big 10 so it's one of the most physical known yeah. for being like super physical right um so i definitely had to become better physically um and it allowed me to become a lot stronger and which has really benefited me now coming into the professional world because especially in portugal it's very technical um and i brought in a piece that not a lot of people had um like the physicality part right. so now i've been able to work on my technical game and become sure. more of a well-rounded player yeah um but yeah i think that getting an education was the most important for me so being a student athlete it really in the ncaa it really helps you become more organized um good with your time everything like that so it it made it shaped me into uh, like more of a professional person mm. um prepared me for that next step so yeah and and i mean like talk a little about kind of i guess um you know the soccer scene in the ncaa like kind of what it looks like you know the, the, I, I know there's different divisions and i mean like i, I i've been cheating a little bit like i spent two years in san francisco so so i know a little bit more but for those that that don't i think it's good if you could kind of you know lay out a little bit like how, how, how does that you know model work and especially in terms of soccer and the part you were in yeah, so um, it, it depends on the division you're in, Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three. I don't know the numbers, like how many teams are um, in each, each division, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, there's like the different conferences as well, like um, the Big Ten, like mine, Pac-12, um, all these different conferences compete. And basically the first part of the season is just a round robin. It's a random selection. You play teams from all over different conferences. Like right. we went to 
uh, Pepperdine in California and played against them. It, it's really fun. Like you travel all over the world. I think I've almost been to all the states, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's a really, really cool experience to be a part of and to have all that like covered for you with your best friends, your teammates. I, um, so yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. And then you go into conference play and and you play against like mine was like Michigan, Ohio State, yeah. all these big schools um, in the United States. And that's also then you play a tournament if you get high enough in there and it's a really really competitive um environment it's like every game matters right um right because then at the end of the year there's the ncaa tournament that you have to be at a certain level or a certain number to get into that mm. um, and that's like a really cool experience so um yeah yeah it's almost like a bit of a ranking system in LOL too, right? Based on kind of your performance in the, in the conference league. If I'm yeah, not for sure. If, for if sure. I remember correctly. Yeah, no, um, you're right. You're right. Yeah, no, it makes it makes a lot of sense. And and I mean, like since you were kind of like talking a little about kind of, I guess more of the you know social element of it. You know, obviously, you know, playing with your friends, going to to all these different states, like. How, how has, I guess, that kind of side of things been, you know, coming to a new country, you know, a new, new, I don't know if you speak Portuguese or not, but, uh, but kind of like just, yeah. just that adapting to, to coming here too. How, how is, talk a little bit about kind of like how that process has been for you as well. Um, I have like a really interesting story about coming here. Ooh. I I can speak a little bit of Portuguese now. I've been here for two years, so I would hope I can speak <laughs> a little bit, but I still yeah. at sporting very international clubs, so right. they all speak English with me, which makes it a little bit difficult <laughs> to learn Portuguese as well. But yeah. Um, I came to Portugal in the COVID year when everything was kind of scrambled and I just jumped at the first opportunity, which was um, a team Torrience in like a smaller city in Portugal sure. Sure. Um, in Torres Vedras and that team because it was smaller like barely anyone spoke English so it was maybe like one already had her set of friends and spoke with me but it, it was really difficult for me and I was very isolated from the team yeah. like I lived alone and um, it was probably like the hardest year of my life and I almost I almost quit football because like I was like if this is what the professional experience is like, like I, I don't think I right. want to be a part of it right and then like I, I believe everything happens for a reason because then as soon as I was having those feelings sporting reached out and like that step was hard but it led me to where I am now and and this club is just amazing like the people here the support you get um a lot more internationals that right. I can connect with and stuff so um I definitely had to like take that difficult nine months and find like something within me to keep going yeah um but then it, I ended up here, so it, it all worked out in the end. Oh, that, that's awesome. And I mean, like, yeah, yeah, I mean, like, things, things, great things takes time, you know, there's gonna yeah. be patient, working hard, you know, and and then things are gonna pay up. So I'm glad, glad to hear. And I mean, like, I think it's a, I, I, in my opinion, at least, say kind of like a bit of a pleasant surprise that, especially, you know, coming to, of course, it's a, it's a big club, right? But, but kind of just having that international feel, right? Which is gonna make you obviously. Yeah adapt adapt and perform you know at a higher level faster so i'm, yeah. I'm really pleasantly surprised in a sense to, to hear that too and i'm glad you know that that that's the case um i also wanted to talk a little about um before you before you moved to portugal you also took a degree in sports science um, mm -hmm. share a little bit about the thought process on on your degree and a little bit of how you use it as an athlete today yeah, so I graduated with a degree, a bachelor's in sports science and um, minors in psychology and health science. So all stuff I can use uh, moving forward. And that was before I even knew I wanted to play professionally. So looking back, I really set myself up well there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because I've learned a lot about stuff, like what to put in my body, about nutrition, about like, 
how the body moves, what exercises I should do. So that background really definitely helped me. Um, and I can, I always listen to my physios and everything here, but I also can have an opinion and they're like, okay, this girl knows what she's talking about. We right. like, and they explain it to me. And uh, it's the same with the nutritionist, um, the same with the doctors. Like they'll always be explaining things because I have so many questions. <laughs> um, so I think you have to look out for yourself in this world kind yeah. of thing. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So it's it's really good to just have like a good head on your shoulders and just inform yourself. You don't need a degree to do it. Just look into the things you're interested in or if it's problems with your health, anything like make sure you have, you know what it is that you want to talk about and have a little bit of background on it so you can ask right. better questions and learn more and everything. So I think it definitely, definitely has helped me um, moving forward with that. I, I can imagine. And, and I mean, like it just came to my mind too, it just, just in terms of, I know, like, obviously you're, you're, you're what, 24, still, still young in the, in, in the athlete scene, but, but I guess in a sense, you, you never know, you know, if like if you get a, a big injury and it's kind of all yeah. over, right? So is this kind of like an area that you're, I'm like, I don't know if you've been, been thinking that far yet, but, uh, but is that like, do you kind of, is this a field you kind of like want to see yourself kind of, you know, moving into after your career or like, how do you, have you, have you made that kind of thoughts around it? <laughs> yeah. Like I applied at the same time as I was looking into going professionally. Cause again, COVID year, no one knew what was happening. Right. Yeah. Um, I applied to schools to actually do physical therapy, but then the years that I've had here, I realized how much more I'm drawn to like psychology and like the mental side of the game and like yeah. working with athletes would be like something I want to do post um, playing is working with athletes on their mental side because it's so important. Right. Um, I've gone through like a really bad injury here too. So like having that mental peace and like someone I could talk to, it just took my game to the next level. And I think that like talking to people is healthy and like mental health is healthy. Like, yeah, <laughs> like take care of your mental health is like, if you're going to get one piece out of this, like right. take care of that. So <laughs> Um, yeah, I think that's definitely like the direction I'll go in post playing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like it's a very, very critical part and probably more focused on now more than ever. And I think probably the pandemic elevated that too, you know, in a sense of like the importance of your mental health. And I'm like, you, you've been seeing a lot of athletes, you know, almost, you know, coming out after, right. In terms of the challenges that they faced surrounding it. So mm -hmm. the foreign area that is growing right so it, it's, mm -hmm. it looks like a smart move from your side too to just be a little bit ahead of the game right i'm on that yeah. side and and who knows i mean like of course i i hope and i wish you get it like a very long fruitful you know athlete career mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully you don't have to jump into that too fast but it's always good to kind of you know as you were saying like always trying to learn new stuff being you know proactive mm -hmm. and and, and hungry, right? And asking the questions, right? And I think you're gonna benefit a lot from that uh, moving forward. Yeah, for sure. for sure. So after 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 coming to you know Sporting Lisbon, I mean, like you already won two major titles with the club, which is which which is amazing. And congrats, you know, first and foremost for that. Uh, what do you see as being kind of like the key factors for for this success? in your eyes both both from a personal standpoint but also from kind of like a, a team team standpoint um yeah so kind of going off what i just talked about um i came to sporting lisbon and like two weeks into preseason i got injured so that's not ideal um coming to a new club and trying to show like what i can do and everything right. Right. Um, it's really competitive here. Like there's a, all my teammates are Portuguese internationals, the starters on their team there and everything. So it's very competitive. And um, we had a, a cup final and I didn't get to play in it. And it was just as I was like starting to come back. So I felt like I didn't help at all because I, I wasn't on the field. I was right. I 
I wasn't able to actually go on the field and help them. So yeah. it was a difficult time for me, but I I did help obviously, like just because you're not on the field during that game, like there's so much more to just a game. You're helping in practices, training, everything. Yeah. Um, so that was really difficult for me. And I was out for like two and a half months. Like it, I had a re-injury and stuff. And then fast forward nine months and it's May and we have uh, Tasa de Portugal, which is a cup final, like the best team in all of Portugal. And um, I'm a regular starter now. I'm playing and I scored the uh, game winning goal. So it was like uh, amazing in front of like there was like 15,000 people there, which was insane for me. I've never played in front of that many people. Um, so it was like a, the, not the ending, it's just the beginning, but like the ending of a storybook or something like right. where you take that hurt and that pain from before and like make it into something. So um, winning both those titles was just something that I, especially the second one was something I hold dearly to me, but it was the first one that motivated me to right. push myself to get right. to the next one. So I think just having like a strong mentality and and just being a team player and know that you're gonna have moments um, in your career and not every moment is like a great one, but it all makes sense looking back um, and to just like keep going, be resilient um, and yeah. No, I mean like that's that, that's great. And I mean, like as you were saying too, it's, it's almost like uh, now you're done with this chapter, on to the next one, you know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, that's great. I mean, like, yeah, and, and just having the, the what, what is it called, uh, the, the final, you know, important last goal, you know, to, to seal to seal the win, I mean, like, must be, must be an amazing feeling, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. That was, like, that was definitely my favorite goal, even though it wasn't my best goal, but it, like, I the hit it. The goal was a goal. A goal is a goal. I hit it off a volley and it ping pong through. So it was like, <laughs> like God was on my side for that hey. goal. Yeah, um, well, you know, you got to have a little bit of luck in it too, right? Yeah. So <laughs> it, it was great. Anyways, I had a great game and um, yeah, it was really good. I, I can't imagine what, what kind of experience that, that, that must have been. And of course, you know, as you were saying, it's just, uh, you know, yeah, and it doesn't matter, you know, how you score the goal as long as you score, you know, and uh, having the win on top of it, you know, must be, must be, must be kind of, I don't know, I'm sure you kind of just finally I could, you know, lower your shoulders a little bit and you could kind of, you yeah. know, okay, I, I did my part, you know, this time kind of yeah. properly. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So we're about to reach the end here and I just essentially have one last question for you. And, and that's essentially, you know, for, for those that are seeking career in football, soccer, whatever we whatever we decide to call it, and who's watching all over the world here, what tips do you have for them? And I want want you to think about it both as an athlete, but also as a non-athlete, someone who's you know, like wanted to work, you know, with football, perhaps you know, uh, in, in women football as well. What are some things that they should keep in mind? Ah, oh, that's a good question. Um... I think that you just have to be your biggest fan and your biggest motivator. Um, like I said, there's going to be days that are not so good, but you need to surround yourself with positivity and people that want the best for you, like your family, your friends, and just try to stay out of your head if things aren't going well. Um, and also just to be like resilient and, and, and hardworking and humble and like just keep going no matter what happens because it, it'll all work out and uh, and and also like don't listen to I always say like don't listen to the noise like people will tell you you can't do something I've had people tell me I wouldn't do something and then I just stay quiet and I go and I do it and then they're always they're congratulating you at the end of the day so just keep going and trust yourself and be your biggest supporter and fan would be my advice awesome i, I think that's a great way to to close this podcast and chandra i would like to you know thank you so much for, for taking the time you know for sharing your story your insights and i wish you of course uh, a great great continuing career here at 
here at Sporting and uh, a lot of a lot of goals, important goals. You're a striker, so you know a lot of goals. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And I have well, uh, you... one one final thing as well. Though. It's it's like a it's like a tradition that we do at the Sporting Global podcast, you know. And um, I have to teach you a little bit Norwegian. Okay, let's see how this goes. Hey, you're 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 an athlete, you know. Take take the challenges. <laughs> no, so right, right. hey, we everyone has to do it. You know, it's it's always part of the podcast. You know, we have 140 episodes. You know, everyone doesn't matter. All right, all right. <laughs> part of it, part of it. All right. So with every video we do, we always finish with. V snakkes, which means see you later in Norwegian. So that's what you have to say. Okay. Now? Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> v snakkes. There you go. Easy. All right. Great. <laughs> I hope Thank that sounded so much, right. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. This is awesome. Glad you liked it, and we 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 talk very soon. All right. Okay. Sounds Thank good. You.